there, and long time no see since last year's Monday Macabre. I'm Jeremy Brown, and tonight we will be running things on this five-episode series called Tuesday Torment, where every Tuesday up until the 31st of October, we return to the public domain and watch some spooky, overlooked classics that you currently own in your library. I know we already covered some haunting uh, entries from the past, like Messiah of Evil, The Sadist, and Nightmare, but there's still a huge repertoire of genre films where you have to scratch your head and wonder how the hell did this not get picked up by a major studio. Um, I've picked out five films that I believe to be uh, very unique and of course have some history with. Uh, these are films that are, you know, even if I'm not committing all of my attention to, uh, they're at least fun to have on in the background and they do a tremendous job at absorbing this horror bracket to get anyone in the right mood. So. For tonight's screening, we're going with Don't Look in the Basement from 1973, directed and produced by S.F. Brownrigg, written by Tim Pope, and starring Bill McGee, Rosie Holotick, Anne McAdams, Gene Ross, Hugh Fegan, and Camille Carr, and all done on a budget of no more than 100000 This film is fantastic. There's a particular ambiance and sweaty, grungy texture to it that doesn't get replicated today. I remember catching this film on one of my uh, Midnight Movie Collection DVDs from years past. I want to say late middle school on an October night. And it brings me a lot of joy to see it still getting an enhanced restoration every few years or so. Uh, it fits really well with uh, the manic insanity genre taking place at a mental asylum where uh, following a young psychiatric nurse who is assigned to work there after a brutal murder. Uh, throughout the film, she experiences varying degrees of torment from the colorful patients and questions if she is really losing her mind herself. Of course, this film would open a treasure trove of paranoid thrillers like it, like uh, the more recently maybe Gore Verbinski's A Cure for Wellness, if uh, that one rings a bell, or Martin Scorsese's Shutter Island. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if Marty actually checked this movie out before directing that adaptation of the Dennis Lehane novel. Um, a lot of people would probably dismiss this film as trash and thinking it's just pure exploitation, but I'd argue there's a solid balance of terror, humor, and even a subtle sadness in a few short scenes that make it stand out from the rest. It works effectively on a small budget with a no-name cast, and I enjoy putting it on every few years. So without further ado, let's get right into the feature presentation. I'll, I'll chime in around the midpoint to talk further on the production, but for now, Close the drapes, grab some popcorn. This is Don't Look in the Basement. be them, Sam. It's almost 1930 hours. They would have left an hour ago. I think that's him. Hear him, Sam, real low. Watch, above those trees. Are they really coming, Sergeant? You wait. They do this every night. Sam, what's that? Right through there. I don't like it when you say they're coming, Sergeant. It scares me. It's all right, Sam. It's all right now. Shall I tell him, Jane? Yes, and you both come away from the window. It's been longer than ten minutes. Sergeant Jackson, Jenny says it's all right now. Come on, it's all right. Jenny, if they do come, will I see them? No one's ever seen them, Sam. Now let's not be late for supper again, shall we? Don't touch my baby again. Oh, 
All right, Harriet, I won't touch your baby. You better not. You know what will happen to you. I'll, I'll kill you. I swear to God, I'll kill you. Ready to eat, Sam? Oh, every night. Dr. Stephen makes me eat the soup. I bet you don't know how many kinds of soup I've eaten, Janie. Come on, guess. I don't know, Sam. Janie, when can we put my boat in the water? Sam, there's something I've got to tell you. We've been friends for a long time now. But I'm going to have to leave now. I'm going to have to say goodbye. Goodbye? That means you're going to leave me, Janie? We can't play with the boat? I'm sorry. Oh, I miss you, Sam. But I just can't take this any longer. Oh, I know you don't understand. When you're ready, come eat your supper. I'll be in to join you later on. Right now, I have to go and talk to Dr. Stevens. Would you have me put my boat in the water? I bet Janie didn't say goodbye to you, neither. I bet To me, Judge. Use the axe, Judge. Go ahead, Judge. Use the axe. Use it. Again, Judge. Once more again. Strike out. Harder, Judge. Oh, again. That's it, Judge. Hit it again. And again. Strike it. Strike it. Dr. Stevens, I must speak to you. Yes? What is it, Jane? I... He's doing very well tonight. Can you sense how each stroke reaches down, freeing some part of his conflict? Perhaps just a cell or two of the unconscious brain, yet he's reaching it. Reach for it, Judge! Dr. Stevens! Yes? Doctor, I've come to a decision about... about all this. I just can't take it any longer. Harriet threatened me again tonight. I'm leaving. I... Well, you said you had someone else coming out tonight, someone to help. I can't accept that decision, Janie. You're a professional. I won't allow you to do it. Ah! Ah! Put it down, Judge! Ah! 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 Put it down, Judge! Put it down! Ah! 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 Judge! 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 Put it down, Judge. Put it down, Judge! Put it down! That's right. Oh, God. Oh, how did this happen? I don't know. Oh, get out of here. Judge. Judge. You're not going to do anything foolish. Get the ax, Sam. Very quietly, we're going to walk into the house. Come on, Judge. Don't look at Dr. Stevens. I'm going to help you. Come on, quietly. Quietly, calmly. That's right. Into the house. I'm coming with you. That's right, Judge. Sam, put the ax down on the ground. Sam. 
Sam, listen to me. From now on, I'm going to take care of the family. I'm going to take care of Cameron and Janie and all the others. Do you understand? But Jane is leaving. Oh? All right, listen to me. I'll be back in a few minutes to tell you what to do with Dr. Stevens. Do you understand me? I'm coming, Judge. That's right, quietly, calmly. Don't cry, baby. Don't cry. I'll get you bottles. Go to your room now, Sam. Have you been standing there long? Why, no. In fact, I just this minute came in. I didn't see you. I'm Dr. Point. Masters, Geraldine Masters. Am I expecting you? Well, perhaps Dr. Stevens hasn't mentioned my coming. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm Charlotte Beale, RN Psychiatric Therapy. Bill? Yes, I'm to get settled in tonight. I'm starting with Dr. Stevens first thing in the morning. Well, perhaps you'd better go into my office this way. Now, it's eight. Now, would you mind telling me again just who you are and exactly what you're doing here? Dr. Masters, I'm sorry you haven't been informed about my coming. You see, Dr. Stevens hired me, oh, about a week ago, I think it was. Yes, on the 20th. 
I had heard about Dr. Stevens' unusual psychiatric methods and called for an interview. He liked my training and background and said he was terribly short on qualified help and asked if I would start this next week, which is today. No, 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 just wait a minute, Miss Beale. First of all, I was not informed about your coming here. And secondly, I feel sure that Dr. Stevens would have brought this up with me if he'd reached a decision about you. <laughs> Dr. Masters, certainly there can't be a mistake. Oh, perhaps there's just an oversight. And you That's just the point, Miss Beale. Dr. Stevens would not have made an oversight. Not about something as important as increasing our staff. Not when there are just three of us. Uh, normally, three of us on the staff. You know, perhaps I really should go in to see the doctor. He's expecting Miss me. Miss Beale. I have something very unpleasant to tell you. We've, uh, we've had a tragedy here. We've lost Dr. Stevens. He was viciously attacked by one of the patients, and he died shortly afterwards. So you, you can see this is just not the time to discuss any of this. Well, surely you can understand how his death has greatly changed things. Naturally, I've, I've taken over in his place. But since I wasn't informed about your coming here, I, I feel no need to keep any minor commitment that he may have made. Well, certainly not now. You see, I'm, uh, I'm changing some administrative objectives, and uh, what Dr. Stevens had in mind may not be exactly what I'm planning. Not now. I just can't believe Dr. Stevens is dead. We have to accept that, Miss Beale. I just don't believe you could be of any help right now. Dr. Masters, I gave up a perfectly good job to come here. They wanted me to stay, but I left. What place are you talking about? Green Park General Hospital. I was supervisor of the South Beale, I'm not Lord. questioning your qualifications. Did Dr. Stevens talk with your supervisor about your leaving? Oh, I'm sure he did. Besides, I showed uh, them this letter of acceptance from Dr. Stevens. Then they uh, knew about your coming here, then? Why, yes. Do you... Uh... Have any place to go from here, Miss Beale? Well, frankly, no. Unless, of course, Green Park would consider taking me back. I suppose I could tell them what's happened here about Dr. Stevens and about your taking over. Perhaps they would make some sort of consideration. I... Miss Beale, frankly, I, I, I have a very difficult decision. There have been some abnormal reactions with a few of the patients. Dr. Stevens trusted them. He treated them as if he were their father. So realistically, this has been a death in the family. Now my job is to recreate that trust. I doubt seriously the Green Park would take you back. and It would be very awkward trying to explain all of this, so... Uh... Well, since you're here and Dr. Stevens did make the commitment, I guess you might as well start in the morning. Thanks, Dr. Now, you must understand that I'm not offering you anything of a permanent nature. It takes a very special attitude to work here. Dr. Stevens told me that. Dr. Stevens believed that insanity was not a breaking away from reality, but rather a very complex series of obsessions. Psychiatrists have always tried to reverse that, you know, bring the patient back to normalcy. But Dr. Stevens believed the opposite. He believed that, that these obsessions could be pushed forced to grow so large, so ominous, that the patient would have to use his own strength to destroy them. Yeah, that's a very interesting theory. We live and work very simply here, Miss Beale. Our patients are all people who are unloved, unwanted, forgotten. So we're a family, their family, and everyone helps with the chores. Well, now, I'll... I'll show you to your room. I'm afraid there's no connecting back. I'll take it. Thanks. Well, this is 
bit. I hope you'll be comfortable. I have a lot of things to do now, so if you'll come into my office in the morning, we can go over your routine. Thank you, Dr. Masters. Good night. Oh, Dr. Masters, where are the patients' rooms? Well, they're uh, right next to yours and upstairs. As I said before, we're a family, and it's for that reason there are no locks on any of the doors. Dr. Stevens didn't believe in the doctor-patient relationship. Good night. Good night. Yours. Up the airy mountain, down the rushing glen. You never can go hunting for fear of little men. tells me what he wants. So? He's very sad this morning. Why is he sad, Sam? Because everything's changed now. Like that Miss Charlotte and there's some others. My baby's very sleepy. Very sleepy. Charlotte's name is Miss Beale. That's what you're supposed to call her. Dr. Stevens called the Miss Shelley. He's very worried this morning. Oh, I should have said. He was right. Sam! Janet didn't say goodbye to you. She wasn't your friend. Sam, it's time. Are you ready? Oh, shoot, Sergeant. Do I have to? Oh, all right. Prisoner's inside. Guard that door carefully. Oh, all right, Sergeant. What do you want me to stand, Reggie? That's right. And you'll not leave it. Oh, sir, are you coming back? That's Danny. Yes? The guard is posted, sir. Jennifer? Yes. The prisoner is secure, sir. Thank you, Sergeant. That was Sam's friend, Jaffe. Yes, we call him Sergeant. Difficult case, war. He was or is a real 
sergeant. Uh, his uh, platoon was lost in combat because of something he did. His prisoner, as he calls her, is Jennifer Downey. I want you to watch her very carefully, spend some time with her. Several times she's attempted to escape. Escape? In the sergeant's jargon, to uh, break confinement. Sam, I've told you not to interrupt me when I'm busy. But Dean, what do you want me to do but with Sam, I'll, I'll talk to you about it later. Go on now. Go on. And that's Sam. Sam. Sam is a lovable child. He's been a patient of Dr. Stevens for several years. And Dr. Stevens operated on him three, no, four years ago. Dr. Stevens allowed me to assist him in that operation. Drilling through the frontal lobe left Sam harmless, but with the mentality of an eight-year-old. That was the last lobotomy Dr. Stevens ever did. And it was because of that operation that Dr. Stevens turned from surgery to his obsession development theory. Tell me about Allison King. Allison? Allison has had a very unfortunate past. She was very close to her father, and he died. She was 13. Then her mother remarried a man that Allison absolutely cherished, and he left. And that was the beginning of the pattern. Allison tried to love other men, and they were cruel to her, and they left her, and she almost gave up. The classic pattern, isn't it? Then Allison met a man. She thought he was perfect. He loved her, and they lived together, but he used her. He sold her to other men. Well, her love for him smoothed that over. But then someone came along that was younger and prettier, and he threw her out. And that was the breaking point. What is her attitude now? She craves love, desperately, from anyone, everyone. And these others, Harriet and Mr. Cameron. My name is Oliver W. Cameron, Juris Consult, Adjudicator of the Court of Appeals, Doctor of Jurisprudence. What are you doing in my room? Well, I really dig all that mumbo jumbo. You know, it's just quality. What is that odor? Strawberry. Do you like strawberry? Ripe strawberries of the color of blood. Taste me. Please, taste me. I can be anything you want. Oh. To be carnally minded is death. Come on. I do taste like strawberries. Shroud your nakedness. You're obscene. I'm, I'm warm and I'm loving. I have, I'm loving. I'm passionate. Men love me. There's not a man anywhere who doesn't really love my body and soul. Slut! <laughs> you freak. <laughs> you don't want to be touched because you're so damn pure. You phony freak, you're trembling. Look at you. You're hot for it, but you can't reach out. You can't reach out. You can't love. You can't make it. But I can't! Rejection can be a very painful experience. Well, I'll tell you about the others later, but right now I'd like you to start with Mrs. Callingham. Oh, yes, Mrs. Callingham is the one who occasionally hallucinates. Oh, yes, she has a number of interesting worlds. Why don't you take her for a walk? She likes the flowers. She sometimes believes they're her children. It's pleasant here, don't you think, Mrs. Cunningham? Do you get out often? It's you who need to get out. <laughs> yes, I remember. You were going to tell me why. Oh, up the airy mountain, down the rushing glen, we cannot go hunting. Because of little men. Oh, Bobby, Ellen, Lester. Operator. 
Operator. Operator. Operator. Operator. Oh, Sam. I didn't hear you come in. Dr. Stevens. He don't call on the phone anymore. Sam, I know how much Dr. Stevens liked you. Dr. Stevens wants us happy. He said I should tell you. Sam, I understand. Dr. Stevens is still very real for you. Oh, Miss Charlotte, I, I forget what the doctor told me to tell you. I, I knew it a minute ago. Sam, it's all right. I understand. Come in. Sorry to bother you when you're busy. Well, that's all right. Have a chair. It's about my phone. Well, patients seem to be accepting you. That's important. I suppose you've noticed that it's the little things that count most with them, especially Danny, and of course, Sam. You're very fond of Sam, aren't you? Yes, very. Dr. Stevens was very close to him, too. Sam's lost his intelligence, but he has very deep feelings, perhaps deeper than ours. Oh, Dr. Masters, I'm... Oh, don't be alarmed. This is Jennifer. Occasionally, she becomes very withdrawn, and naturally, I like her to be with me when that happens. Is she beyond help? Beyond help? To say that means that we've given up, and we never give up. No one's beyond us. We're always getting closer. Yes, of course. Please don't misunderstand. No, no, no I understand. Well, it's time to be getting into bed. I promised Adam that I'd read to him. Would you mind saying to the others? No, of course not. Dr. Masters, I hope you'll forgive my statement about Jennifer. I simply meant that I... It's just that you're not quite used to all our little family yet, Miss Beale. One day you'll be as close to them as brothers and sisters. Good night. Good night. Dr. Masters, before I forget, I wanted to tell you that my phone is not working. I was wondering if you're having the same trouble. Uh, well, that occasionally happens. I'll try to take care of it. Good night. Good night, Harriet. She's asleep. It's time you should be asleep, too. Good night. Oh, you liked our walk in the garden, didn't you? Yes, I did. Well, don't be surprised if we never go again. Don't mind my observing. You handle Mrs. Callingham very well. Better than some of the others. Jennifer. understand that ours is a family of persons who know very few limits, even the limits of physical pain. When, when Mrs. Callingham did this to herself, she was probably beyond the threshold of physical feeling. My greatest concern about her is the blood that she's lost. She's very weak. I don't hold up very well, do I? I'm sorry. It, it's just 
thought of our old being asleep. She was probably hallucinating. Self-infliction of pain, self-disfigurement, sometimes that indicates that the patient has transcended the body. Oh, what would Dr. Stevens have done in a case such as this? Exactly as I'm doing, calling as little attention to it as possible. Now she's received treatment. Now she has to accept what she's done. For the time being, I, I wouldn't discuss this with any of the others. Dr. Masters, aren't you ever afraid? I'm always afraid. talking about, sir? Well, I don't know yet. It's, uh, it's something with your voltage drop. Oh, never mind. I'll, I'll find it myself. Say, how come you people didn't call? I mean, about the telephone. It can't be working. My name is Oliver W. Cameron, Juris Consult, Judicator of the Court of Appeals, Doctor of Jurisprudence. Well, that's got to be some big problem. <laughs> What's the matter with her? Cat got her tongue? I warn you. Heed the lady's advice. What did she say? <laughs> she said, your being here represents grave danger. <laughs> oh, lady, I'm sorry. I mean, I didn't know. She ain't got no tongue. Objection overruled. That is immaterial, irrelevant, and out of order. Oh, they let you people just wander around out here, huh? Hey, buddy, how about give me back my screwdriver? I will conduct you to my chambers. No, 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 that, that, that's quite all right. Uh, look, here's what we'll do. You, you people just, just wait right here, okay? And, and I'll go and, and find the equipment, all right? And if I'm not back in three minutes, why, you people can go and hide, okay? That's an awful virus you've got there, lady. Exactly. How did you enter this building? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. First, which way are you? I mean, this way or that way? I don't know what you're talking about, and I want you to answer my question. I'm, I'm sorry, Doctor. It's just that, well, you've got so many twilight people around here, you know, and, well... Exactly. What are you intending to do here? It's your phone. I mean, we've been getting some strange readings on your voltage lately, and... Well, I just came out to check it as quick as I could and get the hell out of here. Why didn't you inform me of your coming here? How could I inform you? You ain't got no telephone. You uh, got bouncers on every door and a receptionist that ain't got no tongue. What's the inform? That's enough of your impertinence. You had absolutely no right to enter this building without my permission. So what am I going to do? I'm supposed to fix the telephone. You want me to fix the phone? You don't want me to fix the phone. It don't matter to me. I'm just the phone man. Now, I drove for an hour to get out here. You tell me. 
All right, this way. minutes to escort you out of the building, and under no circumstances are you to have anything more to do with any of the patients. Now, is that understood? Whatever you say, Doc. I'm just trying to help. You know what I mean? Shh. I'm uh, fixing the telephone. That shouldn't take too long, huh? No. One of the lines was cut. It'll just take a minute. You, uh, you do understand me, don't you? You know, I... I used to live in this place where the phone man is always coming around. Oh, yeah? That bad, huh? I thought you meant that, that you had a lot of phone trouble. Hell, I didn't even have a phone. <laughs> Who let you in anyway, honey? Uh, I don't know her name. The, the doctor, I guess. She let you in? Yes, yeah, sort of. She is the boss, isn't she? You know, you're kind of handsome. What's your name? Now, look, honey, I'm, I'm just the telephone man. Don't be afraid. Look, sweetheart, uh, you're a good-looking gal and all that, but this ain't my bag. Not, not in the closet, it ain't. Now, cut it out. I ain't even supposed to be talking to you or nothing. I love you. Now cut it out. Huh? Oh, you love me. You do love me. Oh, I'm a princess. Oh, I'm a princess to men. They can't turn away from me. They, they grasp me and kiss my blush. Don't push me away! You said you loved me. You said that you loved me! No, cut it out! Love is pure. Love is grace. Love is strength. You love me, your love is pure, you'll always love me. <gasps> now look what you've done. I've got a secret, I've got a secret. And I don't tell nobody but Miss Charlotte. You're doing fine now, Mrs. Callingham, but you need to rest. You've been up and around too much. She's fooling. I'm sorry, Danny. I'm sorry you shouldn't have scared me. You won't tell on me, will you, Danny? You won't tell on me, will you, Danny? You won't tell on me, will you, Danny? Will
because you said Jennifer was withdrawn. Withdrawal is an acute reaction to a real condition. Dr. Masters, perhaps I shouldn't come here at all. I don't think there's any point in our talking about your leaving, Miss Beale. You forget you were very anxious to take this job. I made special provisions for you to be here. I realize that, but I don't know what to do. I'm the doctor, and you're the nurse, and what I do decides what you will do. I'm all right now. I, I just need to get some rest. Carcass they left to be carrion. Many a livid one, many a sallow skin left for the white tailed eagle to tear it. Left for the horny nipped raven to rend it. And gave to the garbaging warhol to gorge it. And that gray beast. Wolf of the Weald. Some night soon. The doctor's going to help you, Judge Cameron. Gibberish. The doctor will help you. Masters has nothing to give me. I ain't talking about Deanie. I doubt that you know what it is you are talking about. I wish you would go. Dr. Stevens knows Miss Charlotte. And Miss Charlotte knows Dr. Stevens. That's right. He's going to help her, too. He don't want to hear just now. Denny wants her, though. Denny told me. Of course, Masters doesn't want Beale to leave, you idiot. Sometimes, Dr. Stevens tells me about Miss Charlotte. Yeah. You can have a popsicle. Ah, <laughs> oh, Sam's beautiful, isn't he, Judge? No past, no future, only the present. For him, Dr. Stevens will always be in the present. Wish we could all think of him that way. Judge. Judge, your floor is dirty. Now, it's your responsibility to keep your room clean. I want you to take care of it now. All righty. I'm sure you're already thinking what an assortment of performances we got here. Uh, from the man-child Sam and his affinity for popsicles to the schizophrenic nymphomaniac Allison. Uh, everybody is so committed to their characters in Sandy, it's like they're all competing for their Best Supporting Actor nomination. Uh, the patients, despite their flaws, actually bring a real sense of humanity to the asylum proceedings, uh, more so than the main characters, and reinforces the idea that if allowed to freely act out their realities, will they eventually snap out of it? It's all hyped up to be a bit ridiculous if anyone thinks this film is insensitive or supposed to be a really realistic depiction of how sanitariums work, uh, they're going to be kicking themselves the whole runtime. It does beg one thing, though, and that's just how much of the violent outbursts and bad night trips could have been solved if they actually, I don't know, locked the doors. Um, <laughs> everyone is roaming around as they please. That it's, it's shocking the house hasn't burned down yet. So also, the, the film was directed by S.F. Brownrigg, um, sometimes known as Brownie to friends and family, and he was a regular do-it-yourself Texas regional independent filmmaker. And while he only had a small handful of highly distinctive and peculiar low-budget horror 
exploitation pictures, he nonetheless carved out his own singular niche style and impressive body of cinematic work. His films are distinguished by a bleak, brooding tone, murky plots, a startling twist ending, um, lively acting from a no-name cast, shocking moments of gruesome violence, and a flavorsome down-home backwoods country atmosphere. Don't Look in the Basement was his debut theatrical feature, um, landing him cult popularity and was a smashing hit with uh, the early 70s drive-in community. Uh, he continued this run of grungy, sleazy, claustrophobic, grim storytelling uh, until producing the lowbrow comedy Thinking Big in 1986. And supposedly, he wanted to write and direct a sequel to Todd Browning's Freaks, which would have been an expansion on that carny world of disfigured and disabled showmen, but that picture never got the green light, and like many of the indie types of the time, he'd spend the rest of his career working in television before passing, sadly, away um, at the early age of 58 in 1996. So, not to end on a sour note, but let's get right back to Don't Look in the Basement. You had a real baby once, didn't you, honey? This is my baby. Jeez, I feel sorry for you. You really think that's a real baby? Baby? Yeah. Now get off, you moron! My name is Oliver W. Cameron, adjudicator of the Court of Special Sessions. Please examine the evidence. Judge, can you be a man to me? My name is Oliver W. I'm asking you. My Name? Judge, yes. please love me. I need somebody to love me. But don't touch me! You're all alike. Danny, Jeffy, I love you. Trying to be so high and mighty. Get out. Get out! No, 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 no. I, I need you to help me. About something else, I mean. I know, I know you can get a secret. with him yesterday, right here. Oh, he's sweet with, with 
huge close to my hands. I think maybe he's gone. I think maybe he's looking for me and he can't find me. He's the most beautiful man anywhere. And he loves me. You always did have an eye for such things. Judge, he wants me. Naturally, I must weigh this new evidence very carefully. Oh, Judge, please! <laughs> Sarge? Let me see. Back off, they're on their way. Let me see. Move it. There's nothing there. You're crazy! here in the sanitarium is going to remain absolute, unchallenged, and totally unimpeachable. Do you understand? going to never be challenged again, do you understand? My office, my profession, my charge, my liability, my suffering for your good.
understand. He wants to help you, Miss Charlotte. Uh, who wants to help me? What are you talking about? The doctor. Oh, Dr. Stevens, I suppose. Well, thank you very much, Sam. But I think we should talk less foolishly about all this. I'm the only one who could tell you, Miss Charlotte. Stephen's going to help you, if you take the watch. <sighs> this kind of day seems to take away all your troubles. For a while, anyway. Do you have a family, Daddy? I thought you mentioned your mother once. Where did you live when you were young? Miami Beach. Oh, yes. Your mother was in business, wasn't she? Yeah. Massage parlor. <laughs> I remember. You. <laughs> Thank you, Danny. <sighs> I guess it's time we should go in. Sure.
two vials of lithium barbonate and one vial of Avactyl. You sure they're missing? Very sure. They were taken from a new container. Oh, this is really quite serious. Have you checked all the rooms? Oh, just about, except for Danny's and Jennifer's. But you have checked uh, Cameron's and Jaffe's room. Oh, I checked those first. Well, I'll have to go over all this personally. Thank you. Dini! Dini! Dini!
can't find her. I can't find her anywhere. I gotta find her. Well, what is it? What do you want with her? I gotta show her. Tell them why I got the popsicle. What is it? What's down there? Come on. Come on, I'll show you. Sam, I don't have time to play right now. I'm busy.
my man. Geraldine, he loved me. You're upset, Allison. I think you better go to your room. I'll get you something to help you sleep. No. I'm not going anywhere. You're not going to touch me. We know all about that sleep. Your little doctor bit over. Yeah, that's right. I told Miss Beale. She knows. What does she know? Does she know how I worked? How I trained? To be the best? And I could have been. Except for one insignificant life. I could have saved thousands. And I will. I'll help everyone. I'll help you, Allison. Hold out your arm. And you told me she was a patient, too. Give me your arm. Don't you touch me with that. No! shouldn't have done that. I... I can't sleep now. I, I have to take care of my patients. Operator! Why don't you work?
keep out of this room. been looking all over for you. Here. What is it, Sam? Dr. Stevens said you should read it. What? Take it, Miss Charlotte. I'm in charge. I'm the doctor here. The court has made a decision. You are no longer in charge. I am in charge. I am in charge! I will allow you privileges and liberties. Even after what you did to Dr. Stevens, I'll let you keep your little toy. You wouldn't take that away. I'll take it away. I'll take it away. I'll lock you in your room. Where is she? My name is Oliver W. Cameron. Where is she?
back. And that concludes Don't Look in the Basement. As all great exploitation flicks do, they end in one big bloody hurrah where love conquers all and the insane get put to rest. Uh, weirdly, this movie uh, got lumped into uh, the video nasties in the UK and didn't get a fully restored release until uh, on DVD in 2005 with a 15 rating. I know our MPAA rating system is wonky already, but I really don't understand how the Brits decide what's appropriate and whatnot. I mean, I mean, even with the added blood, this is not a very graphic movie. You you can attest to this. One thing I do love, though, is just how definitive the title is. They were working with other potential labels like The Forgotten, Beyond Help, and Death Ward number 13, but what we got in the end was just much more marketable. It is blatantly warning you not to do something, and this would spawn an endless series of movies with don't in the title, don't go in the house, don't answer the phone, don't be afraid of the dark, don't breathe, don't worry darling, don't. Anywho, uh, one more notable mention is that this film did get a sequel in 2015, don't Look in the Basement 2, directed by S.F. Brownrigg's son, Anthony Brownrigg, and features actor Bill McGee as a much older Sam re returning to the sanitarium almost 40 years later. They filmed it in a lot of the same locations in Texas, and if memory serves, the film was pretty decent. It was okay. It was, it was minimalist. Uh, about as much as you can expect a sequel, uh, let alone a family homage, can be um, only just a lot more uh, production value. Uh, well, there you have it. I, I hope you enjoyed this uh, first entry of Tuesday Torment. I hope to see you all next week. And uh, until that time comes, happy hauntings, everybody.